all the Apple fanboys, you know, go create ten sites where they basically parrot this so it becomes internet spam by Google's algorithm. Yeah, well, I had this discussion today about why people like Apple. I mean, I, I think I think we don't have so many listeners who use Apple computers, and even if they do, that's fine, you know. Uh, and some of them usually they use a mixture, like the kids maybe use Apple or something. But one of the things that I found with Apple, it's, it still is a branding company, and now that they lost Steve Jobs, they kind of lost one of the major brands. And and for them, it's really hard to actually try and justify the cost of the uh, of the devices. I mean, they they, they have this uh, this advertisement here that says basically, if it's not an iPhone, it's not an iPhone. Which doesn't tell you actually anything about the features. <laughs> that it, is the exact same ad campaign. Yeah. Right? And that's what I say every time I see one of those. Oh, if I didn't buy an iPhone, I didn't buy an iPhone? Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's quite funny because they don't speak about features and then you bring up those subjects. And I had this, this friend in the gym, uh, Fabio, and, and he would speak about how he likes his iPhone and stand, stand up in the queue. And I asked him, what's so good about it? I'm saying it in a very friendly way because he's a friend of mine. And I'm saying, can you explain to me what technically is good about it? And he couldn't bring up, but then he says it's like, it's like it's nice, it's cool. And I'm saying, no, no adjectives, like explain to him what's good about it. And he was there and he was kind of realized that there wasn't anything too special about it. Well, I don't know how he got off on Apple in an a open show, but the reality is it's, it's the magic. And just like any magic trick, as soon as you start analyzing it, the magic goes away. You know. Well, I think it's a cultural thing and also an ego thing, because the way Apple was marketing the stuff is basically you're supposed to feel better if you have these devices, and, and as long as people project the same respect and admiration and, you know, awesomeness about, you know, oh, he's got an Apple, he's, he's an Apple user. Did you see him? He uses a Mac. Did you see his Mac? It's, it's so, and when people see this around them, they get the sense that they could buy themselves a ticket into a popular culture if they buy the Apple product. So they actually buy themselves a lifestyle instead of buying a device uh, because they affiliate themselves with, you know, Steve Jobs and the richest company and, you know, Renaissance and the anti-Microsoft, you know, we are not using Microsoft stuff. Whereas the Linux users, of course, for them, it's not the Microsoft, it's just we don't use proprietary software. Ah, okay, so that's not really about brands, it's about philosophy. Uh, so then well, that's... Uh, we'll, we'll move on, time's pressing on. And we'll go on to our f- one of our final topics of tonight, which is coming from Roy. And I believe Roy's got a bit about Red Hat. Yeah, I mean, Red Hat is doing something quite interesting. I think that's the first time they go to the public and kind of ask what you want in the next operating system. And as you probably know, when it comes to server uh, um, platforms based on Linux, I mean, Red Hat is the leader by far. So uh, not just when it comes to sales, I think even when it comes to market share, everything tends to be based everything in the majority tends to be based on Red Hat. So <clears throat> even if you're looking at something like Cent OS or... I, I, yeah, I would say Cent is is growing big time, but like you say, Cent is is Based. basically taking Red Hat and you know going, oh, well, aside from these few proprietary things that we can't take, we're, we're basically Red Hat. We're just called Cent. You know? Yeah, well, well you, know, you know, Red Hat actually defines what's going to be in it. So so what Red Hat's basically doing now with Red Hat, uh, I, I think they want to invoke the, the, the vaporware game and say, oh, Red Hat 7, it's coming quite soon, and I think it's like 2012 or 13, it's far away from now. Well, and they just get... to put validity on that one way or the other by looking at what's going on in Fedora. The, are you sure? Yeah. I mean, do they have loads of, like, server features and things in Fedora to the same extent? I mean... Uh, the way I see Fedora, and I've used it before, several versions, it's, um, I, how many people do you know run Fedora on a server? Who tests it on a it, server? Not many. I, I think it, it's very... It's supposedly a public beta, but you're right. That It's not, you're right, not in that regard. Because people will usually use, like, CentOS or Red Hat or even Debian, too. I think it's to do with the fact that they want something stable on the server, and, like, they can afford a crash in the desktop sometimes or something not working and and also of course that they, they don't have to use the uh, they don't have to uh, upgrade every six months you know you don't really want to upgrade your server every six months you just want good patches no, re- really the only time you upgrade your server like you say to fix a security patch or a found vulnerability yeah and, and I think the fedora security uh, patches are not at the the same quality perhaps the same uh, you, you don't want to take down a server and rebuild the whole server you know Having a downtime of one day or so because of uh, 
but just because you were too lazy to get sent OS or whatever. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, they they have this 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 thing that's that's Red Hat Seven, and they basically ask people for a proposal on what to put in it. And I I think is it fair to say you know, that when it comes to the GNU slash Linux distribution, Red Hat and the derivatives or the flavors of of well derivatives of four of it and clones and stuff are the most widely used. Uh, I'd say it's a, I'd say it's about a 60-40 split. All right. I'd say it's about 60 Red Hat and Red Hat derivatives like Synth. And actually, uh, Debian-based things are getting a lot of traction in the servers as well. Yeah, one, one of the customers is moving all 300 servers now to Debian. Which is quite cool because I don't have to get confused and check like you know what machine is running. It's just basically standardized in Debian. And the reason they do that is actually not because Reddit sucks, but because it's uh, they say they kind of go proprietary. But Reddit is just going a bit more like towards the uh, uh, I don't know like they, they they try to find ways of extracting money out of you. Uh, yeah, so no, Red Red Hat is becoming uh, Microsoftian like in that. You know, once upon a time, Red Hat was great, but now it's it's like when you call Microsoft, it's like, oh, well, that'll be another 50 bucks. Oh, that'll be another 100 bucks. Oh, that'll be another blah, blah uh, pounds. I should be saying pounds. So stuff. maybe they become more like Oracle, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, and, and that's why since gaining a lot of traction, like you said, people are switching to Debian-based distros. Uh, the other reason a lot of them are like in Debian is because as long as Canonical is Debian-based, there's a benefit there. Yes, uh, packaging-wise. Uh... Yeah. Well, we'll continue on with the derived distros uh, theme and we'll look at the desktop uh, more here because uh, every week or bi-weekly now, as it has been for the last month or so, uh, we always get a, a whole slew of uh, Ubuntu derived uh, distros, some new, some more established. And one that caught my eye uh, for this particular week was Dream Studio. Now, there's very, there's very few things that I require a distro for. I have a very generic, general uh, usage for my uh, desktop. But uh, Dream Studio is probably one that caters quite well for something that we do a lot of, which is obviously recording tech bytes and uh, doing audio and uh, some visual work as well. So uh, let me just read the description from DistroWatch. It's Dream Studio is an Ubuntu-based distribution containing tools to create stunning graphics, captivating videos, inspire music, and professional websites. So it's it's aimed at the more creative souls amongst the amongst the listeners there, and it's one that I'm going to be checking out in the next few days. Uh, I don't know if um, Rusty and Roy, I know you don't share my passion for distro hopping, so I don't suppose you've uh, had a chance to have a look at this one. I, I, haven't mess, I haven't messed with this one, but I'm noticing what they're saying. Like, they're including Cinderella. Mm. I hope that <laughs> Cinderella works better on that distro than it's yeah. worked on most. I'm like, and I hope they've, like, tweaked the user interface so that it's intuitive rather than entirely counterintuitive to anybody but the most it's... pro video editor. <laughs> It was when I um when I first looked at uh, Cinelera, it was akin to somebody stepping into the cockpit of a Boeing seven four seven for the first time and trying to work out how to fly the plane. But, um, but, <laughs> but when I mess with Cinderella, because I have friends who like do video editing over the years, and I'm reminded of the old analog video editing technology, like before we went digital. It's mm -hmm. set up like that. So if you're somebody who's been editing video all your life. Within a weekend, you can figure out Cinderella, and it's just like your old tools that you don't have anymore, but it's all digital now, and you'd love it. Mm. But that's not how the average user edits video. <laughs> it's like there needs to, there's been a project proposed, but it's never really got finished, of taking the Cinderella core and creating a Caden Live-like UI mm. for us average people who are not. <laughs> yeah. well, what it's... about the fact that you, you've got a... You've got Blender 3, 3D, uh, and I, I just heard a um, show, uh, Linux Outlaws, a few days ago, and the fact that it's very complicated to use, but there is a good reason for it, and, and you know, if you want to do something professionally, you have to learn a few things. It's not because it's false, but it's because it's it's doing things in a very professional way, and mm -hmm. it's trying to cater for specific types of users. 
And now I'm not sure you have you heard about the I think it's called Final Cut or something, the Apple thingy or not. Oh, well, but, and they're going the exact opposite direction. They're going and screw they, you, they, professionals. That's yes, what, and that, that's what I've heard. People really hate the thing and they say that's not professional. That's the opposite. Well, yeah, it's like they're trying.